Hello and welcome to another video about photography, namely about the Fujifilm X-T4 which is filming me right now and how I use it to take pictures with two f2 prime lenses, namely the 23mm f2, let's see if it will focus, there we are, and its tighter brother, the 50mm f2, which is right over here, hopefully I don't drop it, there we go. So. Let's jump straight into the pictures and see how these two lenses perform in real life travel situations. So this first picture was taken with the 23mm f2 prime from Fuji on the Fujifilm X-T4. It's in Paris, it's the day that Morocco won one of the World Cup games and uh, it's just like the impromptu celebrations on the street uh, and I was in a car and it was just an incredible kind of scene to capture just like on the fly and uh, I mean the ISO was cranked all the way up to 6,400 6, I had the camera set to minus 2 EV uh, and the shutter speed which was automatic was uh, 1 over 280 uh, seconds these next two pictures were taken from the back of a cab again and they're thematically linked by the sign on top of the garbage truck with the first one saying patience and the other one in French saying collecte. These two were also taken with a 23mm f2. Uh, I needed the width to be able to shoot out of the window. So these pictures so far are shot a very high ISO, ISO 6400 and the noise is pretty apparent but I think that for photographs like this it's really cool to embrace the noise because basically noise is the new grain and I think that will become more and more the case as the years go by and people reappraise the aesthetic of digital photography. So with a little bit of tonal whiplash we're now in the United States in the Pacific Northwest and this isn't really that much of a special picture, but I feel it just captures the essence of a gray day in the Pacific Northwest, in the sprawl uh, around the Seattle area. This was taken on the 50mm f2 lens, wide open, at a very low ISO, basically the lowest ISO on the Fujifilm X-T4, which is ISO 160. So definitely a theme of this trip was uh, taking pictures from inside cars and this is another one with the 50mm f2 shot wide open at minus 3 exposure. The 50mm worked really well here in, in my opinion because it allowed me to shoot from the back seat of the car and then while you know capturing elements of the car dashboard and the mirror and the uh, front passenger might seem not that desirable. It is desirable to me because I think it gives a sense of scale and a sense of depth. And in doing so, it creates a sense of immersion and authenticity. And continuing with the car theme, uh, here's another picture with a stretch limo in a strip mall, which is <laughs> feels quintessentially American. And here is a Costco gas station at dusk. Uh, to me, this is a very moody shot. And I really like the, the way that the color balance came out. And we're on the road again, but this time during daytime. And I like this picture because of this very imposing cloud front and kind of how it counterpoints with the, the white truck on the, on the left lane. So I quite like this composition because it kind of draws you in along the road and uh, there's the drama there in the in the background and while in many ways it's very quotidian it's sort of the you know the scale and beauty of the quotidian uh, in the Pacific Northwest and I, I'm very happy that I was able to capture that. So these next two shots were also taken with a 50mm uh, f2 lens from Fuji and they were taken on a trip to the Olympic Peninsula which is an area that is west of Seattle and uh, these two images uh, were processed using the classic negative film simulation, which I really feel really captures the drama of a, of a gray day and an overcast day. The 50mm focal length on APS-C is 
really my favorite, the one that I feel most at home in, because it allows me to uh, basically isolate and capture details uh, in a sort of in a day-to-day -day context. Uh, it just allows me to isolate things uh, and you know really capture what I'm drawn to. Uh, details that I'm drawn to. So the, here's an, a cheeky example of that. Uh, if you know what fast food chain this is from, please let me know because I can't remember. I kind of maybe think it could be Dunkin' Donuts. Maybe. I'm not so sure. But if you do know, please put it in the comments. So these next three photos are of the Tree of Life, which is a very striking tree that's uh, located on the beach uh, in Forks, Washington, more specifically at, if I'm saying this correctly, uh, Kalalok uh, Campground. And um, these are kind of three slightly different sort of angles on the same subject taken with the 23mm f2 lens. This was in very good lighting and you have like the driftwood there in, in the front that kind of gives a, a sense of scale, a sense of location, some context. Uh, and yeah, this is a really quite striking subject. Next up we have some pictures of Kalalik Lodge and uh, this first one I was really trying to show how that archway kind of framed the scene. Uh, I probably could have kind of shifted my perspective a little bit to, to kind of refine that, but it is what it is. Um, then we have this much uh, the wider vista and finally a sort of establishing shot of the uh, main building there. This is a pretty stunning view of the approach to Ruby Beach, which according to Wikipedia is the northernmost of the southern beaches in the coastal section of Olympic National Park. And uh, this I think I processed in the uh, classic chrome film simulation because uh, I, I think I can tell from the color of the sky and then the kind of the reflection on the water kind of has a, a different kind of blue, uh, more kind of sapphire sapphire blue maybe. It's very it's very pleasing, and I think that's a telltale sign of the of the classic chrome film simulation. And here we have some pictures of trees from Olympic National Park, so from the Forks, Washington uh, area, uh, and it's a pretty stunning setting to take pictures in. Also quite challenging in terms of getting the right exposure. All of these are shot with a 23mm f2 lens. So I actually really like this last one where you have the sort of the barrier that offers a sort of counterpoint uh, because otherwise just having endless trees can be pretty abstract. I don't know if I would call this a homestead but uh, this is a, a shot taken from uh, from the car, just of the side of the road, but I really like this. Uh, so I shot this with a pretty high shutter speed to kind of freeze motion uh, and then be able to capture the scene. I kind of like the grainy quality of the image. It kind of has a film, film-ish kind of look without it being film. I processed this with um, the classic negative film simulation. So I have to admit here that I did crop this photo quite significantly. It was shot on the XF 23mm f2 lens, but I needed to cut out uh, the passenger that was next to me. Uh, but it's not that I didn't want them in the picture, but I really wanted to refocus the composition. And it, it's a bit of an odd one, but we're returning to the theme of uh, sort of passing scenes from a moving vehicle, let's say. And I just like how the uh, American flag is isolated over on the left there in that kind of sliver of window. And then you have the expansive vista. This picture is from Pike Place Market, more specifically from uh, the market stall where they do the, they throw the fish over to one another. Another picture from Pike Place Market, this time from a, a different stall. Uh, and I really like how the 50mm f2 here allowed me to just throw the background slightly out of focus while I was focusing over on the right. Uh, and you have, you know, the, the fish, which is the main event here in focus, and then you have uh, all the stall workers there huddled up 
uh, in the background and this photo was taken just outside the Museum of Industry and Technology in Seattle. Uh, I really like how the wooden building contrasts with the snow uh, all over the scene. And we end on a high note here with this uh, photo of the Space Needle. But I like here with the, what I like here with the 50 millimeter is just the, the slight compression. It really helps to glue the scene together, you know, from background to foreground. Thank you so much for watching today. I think that will do it for this video. So in the meantime, and until the next video, please take care.